quite a lot of light. Hello. Um, welcome back to Reiki 101 Session 2. Like the animals, careless and free. I want to live. I want the wind in my hair, the sand at my feet. Like the animals, careless and free. Thanks for joining Reiki 101. I'm just going to sing as I get myself grounded and um, wait for people to join. Thanks so much for your patience, everybody. While I was running a little behind today, um, here from my room in Nashville, um, so it's pretty awesome being surrounded by my instruments and my art um, so I'll probably have to pull it down off the walls um, but I will be showing you um, some of my art that's going to be auctioned off um, in the next uh, few weeks going to do a Mim Phoenix art auction so some of my paintings and um, like custom guitars that I've worked on and refurbished and those kinds of things will be going up for auction and later I'm going to post uh, the Reiki manuals that I was given by my teacher uh, Kat Evans and da -da -da. I actually wrote down announcements that I was going to do today Aha. this awesome notebook from sweet sister Rita Lovely Rita. Rita Perry, thank you so much for coming out to Phoenix Nights, by the way. That was phenomenal and fantastic. And um, please forgive me for forgetting to make a poster for you. So um, my hand-designed posters are going to be something else that go up for auction later. Um, I like to get them printed on canvas, but I feel like each week each month at um, Westie's Phoenix Nights um, as a way of honoring each artist that comes to play I design hand design these posters it also pushes me to keep um, creating visual art um, and to da -da -da. stop spacing out no. <laughs> um, just keep challenging my brain and um, <laughs> my sense of organization you know because it's forcing me to create on somewhat of a deadline on a consistent basis and that's been really key in um, helping me maintain at least some of my uh, recovery and I'm just getting grounded and focused um, I've had such an amazing experience of coming home 
like to Nashville, coming home to MySpace, finally being in my room with like my junk and my art, my paintings, my pillows, you know, um, after being in this kind of whirlwind travel for the last six months. Whew, well, technically five and a half, but we'll go ahead and call it six. <laughs> um, beautiful and amazing, and I haven't really wanted to leave my room, leave home, but then I get out and start driving around Nashville. Um, and thank you so much to Deanna um, and Ryan for letting me use the car. <laughs> that has been so beautiful. I got to have lunch with um, Sister Janet and 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 um, and Miss Wanda Clay. She always calls me Barbie J. Barbie J. Miss Wanda Clay. Um, that was really beautiful to get to reconnect with with people, um, and renew those those roots. Um, and it keeps reminding me, I, it comes back, like I go out in the backyard and meditate, um, and those are some of my favorite trees, um, back there in Dad's backyard. Um, it's, it reminds me of that line from the movie Sweet Home Alabama, that you can have roots and wings. Um, and so I've been really working my wings, it was really nice to come home and just rest and feel my roots. Hey Tina, Thank you, thank you, thank you for your patience and your love. So I wanted to pull up um, like the Reiki level one manuals um, that got passed on to me um, from my teacher. They're a pretty good resource. I'm gonna just kind of read from and flip through um, some of that tonight. And I'll post the links so that everyone can download and read that for yourselves. Um, it's a really good resource. There's lots of different schools of Reiki thoughts and takes on it. Um, what Kat did for me was basically transmit her interpretation of Reiki and then pass on the knowledge that she was given as well. And that is something that I would like to do. So. Um, this comes from a, a practitioner named Peggy Jenoff, um, and her information is in the um, all of the notes for this particular manual series also. And so um, one thing I liked from her was, what does Reiki do? Reiki can help alleviate suffering, whether it be of a physical, emotional, mental, or spiritual nature. This means that Reiki can heal. This statement is not a guarantee or a promise that someone will be relieved of any ailment whatsoever with a single or with multiple Reiki treatments. In most cases, Reiki does enhance the effects of medical treatment when used in conjunction with it. An underlying principle of Reiki is that it can do no harm and cannot be used for any harmful purpose. When we speak of healing, a well physical body may be the first thing that comes to mind. However, the root meaning of the word is whole. The practice of healing is that of becoming whole on all levels of being, including the physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual levels. And so that um, brings me back to talking about my theory of healing um, being coming into alignment with your highest, your highest self, your highest soul expression, or with God's source energy. And um, I love that it 
it's just a different way of saying the same thing. And what Peggy is saying in, um, in her book um, is that it's becoming whole on all, all levels of being. And so for me, those are one and the same. Illness happens when the body and spirit become unbalanced. True wellness is reached only by returning the entire being to harmony and balance with itself and with earth and the universe. We begin healing by finding our desire to be well and whole. Without the motivation to be well and the intention to act in our own behalf, we cannot become well. Reiki is a means to empowering us to become whole in all ways. Um, and then she talks about uh, the purpose of Reiki being to enhance personal and spiritual evolution, um, which is what we talked about last week with the discovery of Reiki completely coming from um, Dr. Usui's quest to become enlightened and to become whole. It was his drive uh, to get closer to God, essentially, that led to his enlightenment. Excuse me. So at lunch today, we were um, some uh, beautiful Christian souls were talking with me about what is Reiki and what am I, what am I teaching? And of course, I said, you know, basically, it's for me, it's learning to channel that God energy, God's source energy, to bring ourselves into wellness and into um, a higher state of being and a higher state of consciousness. Um, and as I described Dr. Sui's experience on the mountaintop, um, when he encountered his first attunement, his first um, encounter with Reiki energy, one of them said, so you mean he encountered a glory cloud? And I just got this bolt of electricity through me from head to toe. And said, yeah, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> um, so we discussed Reiki's treatment enhances the body's natural ability to heal itself and increases vitality and stamina. And something that I don't think I spoke of as much last time was that Reiki is called an intelligent energy because it's going to go wherever it's most needed in the body um, and that it helps the body to cleanse itself of energetic and physical toxins. So on an energy level, you're removing debris and static, and on a cellular, cellular level, you're releasing toxins into the body, um, which is one reason that you really want to continue drinking water and help to flush all of that out. So, Reiki works on people, plants, animals, and even machines. It works on anything that... Um, has energy flowing through it. Anything that has that essential uh, spark of life flowing through it, the universal life force energy, because that is the literal translation of Reiki, is universal life force energy. And so Rei standing for universe and Ki standing for uh, that life force. So one thing that I wanted to um, focus on today is that Reiki can enhance I thought I cleaned that board um, your intuition and enhance um, all of your senses but especially your intuition helping to open up your third eye um, I had a trusted doctor um, for I think our family has known him for almost 20 years and um, actually worked with me after my crowning during my recovery um, and was incredibly supportive of the Reiki practice um, and he was talking about how in other countries um, practicing Reiki specifically but energy practices generally is such a huge wave, such a huge phenomenon, and it's you know commonly more commonly accepted than here in the United States or you know in the West in general, and that um, we want to do what we can to embrace that, especially when you're looking at um, a neurological recovery of any kind. So the um, my recovery from traumatic brain injury 
um, my clients' recoveries from Alzheimer's and uh, dementia, um, as well as other neurological disorders, are really kind of tailor-made to be receptive to this kind of healing modality because it works on an energetic or electric level. So every cell you know, communicates electrically, electronically, but no, electrically through energy um, with their organs and systems and with your body as a whole. Um, and that's why the cells are so receptive not only to your emotions and your thoughts and your words, but also to the energetic environment that you put yourself in. And with the practice of Reiki, we're literally helping those cells to return to their original programming, their original state of wholeness and health. One second, excuse me. Oh. And that's not dry erasing. Okay. So, Fendi. Follow your heart, your intuition, it will lead you in the right direction. Let go your mind, your inhibitions, it's easy to find, just follow your heart, baby. Well, it wasn't easy to find my green marker because that's what I was looking for. I like bit to write with that. Okay, Reiki practice and intuition. So the key to Reiki practice um, opening up your intuition is meditation. I just realized that camera's going to make this backwards, so me writing things is not going to be helpful at all, is it? Um, <laughs> maybe that's why the angels were like don't worry about it last week when I was trying to write stuff down um, I'm going to have to work on this and uh, you know, flip the camera next time um, but yeah I'm learning each time getting a little better um, maybe I'll be able to flip the camera around a little later and show you some of the art pieces that are going to be auctioned off as well as the painting behind me is the um, five Reiki principles. Um, hey, Gail. <laughs> so, meditation being the key to enhancing your intuition, and that being the vehicle where Reiki helps that process. So, the five Reiki principles are just for today, I release worry. Just for today, I release anger. Just for today, I am grateful and appreciative. Just for today, I work diligently, I pray diligently. Just for today, I show loving kindness to every living creature, including myself. One thing I like to do is repeat all five three times. And sometimes it takes a minute because I start to forget. But then by the third recitation, yeah, I'm good. And the goal is to sit with that and to connect to your breath, connect to stillness and connect to um, your highest good. If you're looking at this from a spiritual perspective, then you're wanting to connect to your highest self and your spirit guides and to God because, of course, from a spiritual viewpoint, Reiki is utilizing God source energy. And as I'm sure any of you know who are tuning in from my channel, um, I am an ordained minister and I deeply hold that this life force energy is God energy. Excuse me. Beautiful thing about Reiki, it's scientifically measurable as well. And so you don't have to believe in any sort of spirituality. Um, you can just believe in the science of it, the, that, that your thoughts are measurable electronically you know measurable and when you go into a meditative state it actually has an effect on your physical body and that Reiki is proven to have results um, at least in the areas of relaxation and pain relief 
um, and that's why it's being moved into hospitals and hospices and wellness centers um, on an increasing basis. And the more people who practice, the better it is for all of all of humanity. So let's do those. Um, do the five Reiki principles three times, and then sit in some silent meditation for a moment. Just for today, I release anger. Just for today, I release worry. Just for today, I am grateful and appreciative. Just for today, I work and pray diligently. Just for today, I show loving kindness to every living creature, including myself. Just for today, I release anger. Just for today, I release worry. Just for today, I am grateful and appreciative. Just for today, I show love and kindness to every living creature, including myself. Just for today, I work and pray diligently. Just for today, I release anger. Just for today, I release worry. Just for today, I am grateful and appreciative. Just for today, I work and pray diligently. Just for today, I show love and kindness to every living creature, including myself. stay. Thank you. repeating itself so um, at, when I went into one nursing home to practice Reiki music therapy um, this was one of the homes in um, in Los Angeles as I was describing the practice and beginning to work one of the women um, in the memory care unit started saying this sounds like it came from Hawaii and she just kept repeating that it came from Hawaii it came from Hawaii and uh, what's really beautiful about that is that Hawaii is the way that Reiki energy was brought to the US um, it was brought over by Mrs. Takata who was a student of Dr. Usui um, the founder of Reiki and he uh, and she came to the US first in Hawaii and established Reiki there and began teaching and that's how it started to spread to the US um, and what's really moving about that is um, is the act of both the music and the Reiki helping to bring back memories for um, these seniors in the memory care unit um, and specifically this woman's daughter was incredibly incredibly excited because it was a memory about um, a vacation that they had taken several years ago and um, her mother's progressing in Alzheimer's and dementia so they were just um, really ecstatic for that to to come about 
Um, let's see. Reiki does not often give instant or miraculous cures to any condition because it re restores the energetic balance and repairs things like blockages and tears in the energy field which can cre create disease and unhappiness. So that takes time. Mrs. Takata, who introduced Reiki to the West, received treatment daily for months. People often receive great benefit from a single condition. However, some conditions take years to, to form and manifest, also take some time and repeated treatments to be healed. So Reiki treatment is good, even a single short session, but for the greatest effect it comes from frequent treatment and practitioners are urged to treat yourselves daily. And so with the meditation and daily treatment of ourselves, we begin to restore ourselves to balance, bring ourselves into closer alignment with our highest good, and to um, ba, 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 increase our ability to transmit that he healing to others. Kind of like giving from an overflowing cup. You want to fill yourself first and then begin to share that with others. And so um, now we're gonna talk about Reiki attunements. Um, and this is where the Reiki energy is passed on from teacher to student. Um, and it's passing on the ability to, to channel the Reiki, this Reiki energy. Um, it involves a process of clearing any energetic blocks in, in your aura and connecting you to the ability to run Reiki energy by means of a direct transmission to your energy body. There are many different energy systems that use attunement, and Reiki is one of the most well-known and excellent basic all-purpose system of energy work, which goes back to what we said in the first class, that you don't have to have a Reiki certification or practice Reiki specifically in order to use it, the energy, life force energy. It, it is within all things and exists in all things. But when we talk about this particular system that teaches you to channel it, that's when um, we get into the specifics of the system. This is how Dr. Asui trained himself and his students to continue this work. Um, but it's basically the most ancient healing modality known to man, which is the laying on of hands, prayer, and meditative energy. And so with meditation opening up your intuition, it also opens you up to um, a higher connection to that universal life force energy, enabling you to channel and heal yourselves and others. Now, where was I reading? So the attunements are usually given during instruction in the various techniques involved in practicing Reiki. It's taught in levels one through three, um, with the third level being the master level. And we're gonna learn in level one the basic te techniques um, for hands-on treatment of self and others. In level two, you learn remote healing and receive attunements for um, using specific symbols to activate specific functions for mental and emotional healing and increasing the connection and effect of Reiki. Level 3 adds a spiritual or intuitive healing energy function and the ability to attune others to use Reiki themselves. In some, level, some Reiki systems there's a master level distinct from the teacher level. To learn to pass on attunements you must undertake a further teacher level. Some teachers teach and transmit a unified Reiki attunement which includes all the functions of all three levels. Um, and so what I've done with my students um, so far I've only worked with students who've already had levels one and two um, and so I was giving them their third degree master attunement and so this is the my first class taking people from levels one through, through three um, <laughs> I love that Peggy puts in here, being a Reiki master is not a sign or guarantee of a person's moral fiber, upstanding behavior, or any form of emotional or spiritual development. Reiki masters are as human as anyone else. And I love that so much because it reinforces that this is um, 
just like passing water through a vessel. You can scoop it up in your hands, you know, and anyone can, can do that and, and pass it on. Um, anyone can pray and, you know, anyone can rub your hands together and increase the static charge and be able to feel and transmit energy. Um, so when you are receiving energy work as well as when you're giving energy work, pay deep attention to your intuition about that person because you may not want to have their energy touch you or, or merge with you. You know, you always want to go with your gut instincts. Um, unless you are working to overcome some known challenge. Like for me, you know, getting on and doing a show regularly um, like this is a a big challenge and for some reason it triggers little bits of like my social anxiety although I've been witnessing that come up quite a bit in person um, well out not in person but you know out in the real world not on my phone watching myself talk to you guys um, out in the real world really not wanting to go out and be um, part of uh, all of the, the, the movement I guess um, I've, I've really wanted to stay home and even if it meant doing four sessions of meditation four 33s or like I guess yesterday I did three segments of 33 minute meditations and um, I realized that that was more what I needed than anything else and it brought up um, another aspect of healing, especially healing on an emotional level, um, that any trauma to the body, we understand takes more time to heal, but we don't always look at um, emotional trauma taking that much time to heal. But if we have, you know, huge upsets or disturbances, um, anything that causes our, our self, our consciousness to fragment, reintegrating those aspects of ourselves it's like um, the physical body healing from a, a, a car wreck you know um, and I heard that analogy uh, from a I think a teal swan video earlier and it really struck home for me because I know how impactful you know a, a car wreck is on the physical body and when you think about each and every um, fracturing of your consciousness or self, self-confidence, you know, self-unity, being like that kind of train wreck, you know, you have hundreds of those that you have to integrate and, and bring into alignment. Um, so that's hundreds of traumas to, 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 to start to heal from. Um, it helps me personally be able to give myself a break and give myself more time to flow with whatever's happening, whatever's going on. Um, and so that's been really good for me, focusing on spending more time healing, spending more time doing self-reiki sessions, even if it means that you know I'm doing four and five a day. Um, that's just what is needed. Um, a question that that was asked earlier is how um, earlier being by someone earlier in the day how is Reiki you know how can it be helpful for um, depression and um, for me it's been an essential tool in healing from depression especially when I began to transition off of uh, traditional antidepressants and back to herbal remedies exercise and meditation so meditating with the Reiki principles using tools like chanting to help me get into that meditative state um, because the Reiki energy flows best when we're in a meditative state when the noise of the mind is quieted um, in that space of focusing inward um, able to look at the pain or the depression or the whatever the weight is look at it with acceptance rather than avoidance ask 
asking it, what is it that I'm needing to learn from this? What is it that I'm needing to process out of this? As opposed to taking a medication to avoid it or, you know, even running away in order to avoid it or staying busy in order to avoid it, but really sitting with it. And it's tempting, so tempting to sit with that energy and just let it kind of wash over you and pull you down, pull you underwater. Um, one of the beautiful things about remembering to practice Reiki is that you have to go into this meditative state to start that energy flowing. Then you request that energy to flow, and as it does, it begins to help you raise your vibration. It doesn't change or erase anything that you're going through. It just helps you be able to assimilate and address what's going on in a real way and to take those um, those emotions that can be so toxic to our physical body and cause physical disease and ailment and begin to release it, begin to let it flow out and to detox. And this whole six months, I feel personally, has been a literal experience of that, um, which for, for me, it's um, really incredible that the last two years have been um, kind of an illustration of these spiritual principles that I've been learning. Um, 2017 felt like a year of, well, 2016 to 2017, a year of realizing the power of manifestation, law of attraction, using our thoughts um, and words to consciously create our environment as opposed to creating by default and with no awareness. And then this year, 2018, has been really realizing um, how difficult, um, not difficult, um, how much I was still holding on to energetic, emotional traumas, um, and it was making my physical body um, very ill. And not necessarily only because I was holding on to them, but often throughout this six months, it's been as I've released those things, allowed them to come up and come out, um, allowed myself to cry about it, allowed myself to just sit with it, sit alone with it, um, has allowed it to process out. And I've noticed that um, a lot of weight has fallen off with it, quite a lot of weight. Um, and that's been incredibly surprising. Part of that weight loss has been toning because I'm so much more active um, in LA than I than I really have been um, in a few years. But uh, that's just my experience with Reiki and depression specifically. Um, and I would highly recommend that as you move through practicing yourself, um, practicing on yourself is is huge. It's key. Um, but also finding a friend to receive treatments from, um, whether it be distance or in person, um, is going to be hugely beneficial. Um, just like there, there, there is the saying, physician heal thyself, yet there's also um, the, the direction um, for a physician to not treat themselves and uh, to or family members so with Reiki you can get that objectivity and that added perspective of someone else coming in to help with healing but also it's something that you can do to heal yourself and bring yourself back into um, wholeness and awareness um, hey Gail noise of the mind noise of the mind keeps you awake sometimes. <laughs> um, so, oh, my Aunt Lisa, hey, hey, this is awesome. Hello, everybody, new people. Uh, Uncle Richard, this, <laughs> and, and Daphne, of course, the Purple Family. Hey, Tina. All right, let me stop messing with that. So, go into this. Um, Gail was talking about noise of the mind um, keeping you awake at night. So for me, meditations are huge for helping to quiet the mind, especially um, a chanting meditation. 
and my favorite, my my go to, um, it, when 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 it's overwhelming the chatter, is Nam Myoho Renge Kyo. So um, Nam Myoho Renge Kyo comes from the Buddha's last teaching, the the Lotus Sutra, um, and it is devotion to the wisdom of the Lotus Sutra. Um, the law of cause and effect and I was as I was um, moving through and learning more about Buddhism and chanting um, of course the essential Om mantra was huge and we talked about that last night I mean last week the ability um, of changing the O or the M in that uh, to create different effect um, that's because of the seed sounds within Om, um, and there was another mantra that I learned, like um, the Green Terra mantra or Om Mani Padme Hum, which is one for miraculous healing. But to quiet my mind, to really break through those huge barriers that we create for ourselves, I have. I haven't really found anything more powerful than Nam Myoho Renge Kyo and chanting that um, and and it's you know, it teaches the law of cause and effect and ironically it's Nichiren Buddhism that chants Nam Myoho Renge Kyo it's from Japan as well as Reiki and um, when I started practicing um, Nichiren Buddhism I encountered a lot more Reiki practitioners um, so it's that's been an incredible journey. Shout out to the SGI Memphis, um, Soka Gakkai, and uh, the Fifty Thousand Lions of Justice. Ironic that this year the Fifty Thousand Lions of Justice movement is purple and gold, and Justice for Prince um, is of course purple. And I, I I see those parallels quite often and wonder about those movements merging. Um, getting a little off track there. Gail, um, the thing I was going to do is chanting. So reiterating that Reiki's not religious, um, which, you know, uh, if you've been, you know, hearing me, I talk about my, uh, my, my Christian roots and my Buddhist practice. I have always looked for the essence of God, the energy of God, what I have known that spirit to be my entire life, the, the spirit that um, let me know that these entities that I saw and spoke to as a child, I mean as a two and three year old, four year old child, that it was safe. Um, the energy that let me know that despite the way it looked when I was eight years old and unable to walk um, that I would walk again um, the, it was the same energy at 16 that um, told me despite the panic of the doctors and nurses in the hospital and the fact that they were bringing my sisters and I in to say goodbye to our mother that it was not her time to die that my mother was going to live and she's still living and we are um, thankfully moving into a new uh, a new space of relationship um, which I'm very grateful for coming up on Mother's Day um, I'm trying to recover my train of thought there I'm just gonna let it let it ride and go ahead and and get through a little bit more of the text. Um, Reiki, Reiki's not religious, and there is no dogma um, for Reiki. You, what you could call dogma, um, excuse me, um, it's like the things like attunements or using the symbols, drawing the symbols. Um, but those are just the way in which Dr. Asui was able to uh, encapsulate this practice. So um, if there's ever anything that feels uncomfortable to you, to you like using the symbols or receiving the attunements, um, 
you can always say the English translations of those things, write the words the way that you are most comfortable writing the words. Um, and that's my personal belief in the way that I'm going to teach it. Um, other practitioners don't always agree with it, but hey, that's okay. They can teach their own class. Uh, <laughs> Thank you guys for your patience with me today. I know I'm not um, giving a, quite as much information as, as last time. I do feel like that meditation was, was powerful. Attunement. So, getting your Reiki level one attunement is basically passing on transference of energy. Uh, okay, just making sure. Hello, Sister Crystal. And I wanted to go ahead and do the level one attunement so that um, anyone who chooses to can be kind of continuing to work on that yourselves um, and so in this moment again uncross your feet sit very relaxed and um, if you choose to receive this energetic attunement um, if not you're absolutely welcome um, to refuse and I will not send that energy to you only to the points in which it is received and receptive I'm going to do a quick guided gratitude meditation um, to ground us. Breathing in and out. Inhaling pure positive love energy. Exhaling all that does not serve and asking that all lower vibrations and emotions be transmuted and alchemized. I now ask that universal life force energy, that Reiki, divine healing Reiki energy flow through me. It's that divine healing Reiki energy flow through me. Divine healing Reiki energy flow through me. Fill me. Whew. Love, life, light, and healing on all levels of being for the greatest good of all. Asking that attunement to this divine healing Reiki energy be given to those who are willing to receive. Knowing that with each Reiki treatment given, one is also received. In gratitude for this wonderful healing practice, Sending forth the simple primary energy of Reiki that the power of the universe, the healing power of the universe, be placed upon ourselves, upon our bodies, for the greatest good of all, for our use on ourselves plants and animals. The ceiling protection. Guard, guard, guard us by the lightning of thy love. Guard, guard, guard us by thy great self above. Guard, guard, guard us by thy secret power of light, and seal us safe forever in thy diamond heart of light. 
Guard, guard, guard us by the lightning of thy love. Guard, guard, guard us by thy great self above. Guard, guard, guard us by thy secret power of light, and seal us safe forever in thy diamond heart of light. Guard, guard, guard us by the lightning of thy love. Guard, guard, guard us by thy great self above. Guard, guard, guard us by thy secret power of light, and seal us safe forever in thy diamond heart of light. to God and the whole good spirits who reign in this world be with me on this journey Amen Divine God Goddess Divine, be with us on this journey. Bear us safely to the end and bring us safely home again. Divine God, Goddess Divine, be with us on this journey. Bear us safely to the end and bring us safely home again. Divine God, Goddess Divine, be with us on this journey. Bear us safely to the end and bring us safely home again. Everyone to take a deep breath in and release. Slowly begin to move your fingers and toes. Stretch. Feel the breath as it moves in and through your body. Feel the energy begin to move in and through your body. Take your hands and begin rubbing them together like this. So as you create a little bit of pressure with that friction, you're creating static electricity, and also building this charge, this Reiki energy. The more you do it, the more powerful it's going to be, the more sensitive your hands will be to feeling the energy. So what we're about to do right now is a little exercise. I'm going to make an energy ball and be able to send that energy around your body. So once you've got some good heat going, it feels almost like you've got a tangible sub substance between your hands. Start to gently, slowly pull them apart. Pay close attention to any sensations you feel in your hands and in your body. And then slowly move them back together again. So just ever so gently, ever so slowly, moving the hands away from each other and back together. And notice if you feel any tension, any pulling at any moment as you're doing this. If you feel any thickness between the hands. Notice if it gets thicker as you continue to practice this. So what you're doing is increasing the movement of, of this energy from your hands. You're actually tangibly working with the Reiki energy. And so you can either take this energy ball and place it on a specific part of your body, or you can pull it apart pull those hands apart and imagine that that ball is splitting in two and now you've got these mitts of kind of glowing energy and you can place that anywhere on the body where you're needing more help, more attention, more focus, more healing. Any place where those cells need a little help remembering their divine guidance, their divine alignment and attunement. Continue to breathe. It's essential that you keep that oxygen flowing. And remember that your breath and your heartbeat 
are two of the best ways to connect to your highest self. They are the two things that, that run in a straight line from your birth to your death. The breath and the heartbeat. Connect to those two things and you will always be connected to wisdom and infinite intelligence. <clears throat> so go back and get yourself another recharge. Hello, Santa. Hi, Ian. The energy of exposement. No, I haven't read about that, but I look forward to finding out more. So again, working with manipulating this energy and beginning to channel it around the body. So with your intention and your focus as you continue learning to build energy balls and work with them, um, you, you'll be able to take them and kind of push in a general direction. And it's a great exercise to do with a friend um, so you can start to practice together. Um, work up the static energy charge, work on forming that energy ball with yourself, and then with a friend, have them come and mirror that energy for you and be able to feel the pulse. So um, it's a great thing to practice this energy for yourself, for pets, for plants, um, your spouse, your significant other. Um, may be interested to so definitely continue practicing, excuse me, and water. Water is key, it is crucial. All right. And um, let's see, water, water, water. Looking at our time here. Okay, cool, been on right at an hour. Um, hey, Aunt. Uh-oh. Now you see part of my messy room. I did not mean to do... I'm not sure how it did that. I... <laughs> so, whoops. There you go. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, you see some of the art, some of my artwork there that's going up um, in the auction. Um, I see Ian is talking about challenging Taika, um, so that's that's um, in reference to um, the Justice for Prince movement. That would be Taika Nelson, for anyone who doesn't know, um, Prince's sister. And just sending love and honor to the warriors of the Justice for Prince movement. And... Um, putting some energy for towards um, truth and justice coming about um, and to the beginning of entertainment justice. Um, I know that this Justice for Prince movement is really helping to open up, um, open up the eyes of a lot of people and when it happens, when it comes, it's going to be um, a huge awakening and I just pray it happens soon. Um, but, uh, uh, uh. So, does anybody have any um, any questions before we wrap up? I was really kind of expecting to get through more of the material today. Um, and I'm going to talk about a, one more thing. Um, we have a bad rib. Okay. All right, let's send some loving, beautiful healing Reiki energy to Asumpta's rib. So that's right in your solar plexus, going to picture some beautiful sunny yellow, like I've <laughs> got the walls back here. And just sending that beautiful healing light to your solar plexus. Asking for some, some ease and some breathing. 
Uh, some standing in your power. Mm -hmm. So maybe something to look at any place where you want to be um, owning your power more. Yeah. And um, for anyone, you can always tie in, you know, the the the, the chakra systems as you understand them. Um, whatever whatever tools are brought to mind um, or brought up as you're practicing, one of the things that Reiki does is it helps to clarify the mind. It helps bring ideas and um, and messages and enlightenment to the forefront to bring them to your awareness to your consciousness whether it was in your subconscious or it's being sent to you from a spirit guide or a crossed over loved one um, Reiki helps you to bring all of that to your awareness it also helps to attract uh, the right practitioners the right doctors the right treatments into your life um, because it's not the it's not the magic cure it helps support your body in other things and as you practice and bring yourself into closer alignment then your body does begin to do its own spontaneous healing um, its own self-healing um, but like they say God works in mysterious ways it begins to bring uh, you know help orchestrate and bring things in um, the, the right people in the right places and it's kind of like the the, the parable of um, the man who was uh, stuck on a roof in a flood and a, you know I think they said two boats came by and offered him a ride and he said no thank you I'm waiting on God and a helicopter came by and he said no thank you I'm waiting on God and you know maybe a raft or something something else and he keeps denying all of these opportunities for help because he says he's waiting on God and then um, when he gets to heaven because he inevitably you know, drowns um, he's challenged he's asked why didn't he um, or he was asking why didn't God save him and God says well I sent you three boats and a helicopter you chose not to <laughs> get on board um, so we you know just be open to to things to healing and opportunities for wellness coming to you in new and unexpected ways it's not always the instantaneous miraculous healing sometimes it's just bringing bringing you healing and alignment healing and wellness in a new way so um, just definitely stay open to that um, be mindful that as you're going through um, not only Reiki treatments but also attunements that your body is going to detox you're always going to need water at a treatment but especially after an attunement like today okay good night Gail um, make sure that you're continuing to release this uh, to drink water as you release toxins um, attunements and treatments begin your personal healing immediately um, sometimes you can show physical or emotional um, symptoms of detoxing like um, gas or moodiness or diarrhea but these are all all of these are things that were already in your body that are being released and passed and and passing out so you want to allow that to move through and you want to make sure that you're drinking water um, to to continue that um, bum -bum -bum. Um, you'll have some emotional processing um, after your attunements up to 21 days um, and it, a lot of people will have vivid dreams just after the attunements um, if you don't have any detoxifications um, make sure that you keep practicing um, and again always you know talk to your wellness practitioner with anything that any issues that that come up um, because the energy is directing your attention there for a reason and there's something to be healed or to be worked on in that area um, sometimes if a chronic condition is relieved you may actually feel discomfort because you're so used to that um, 
pain or condition being there. Um, So normal reactions to events that occur and emotions that surface during the period just after attunement are sometimes attributed to detoxification when they might really be simply due to a freer expression and an enhanced awareness of feelings which can be an effect of attunements. Um, so being having an increased emotional awareness and intuition is uh, part of the goal but also a side effect when you're aware of more you see more so you see more of everything you see more of what we call bad you see more of what we call good um, but as you continue to do your emotional work seeing all of those things you also become more objective and don't necessarily um, get bogged down or drown in the in the um, underbelly of the of the ocean your, your cork starts to bob closer to the top as your vibration raises all right let's see um, I think that's all we're gonna hit for tonight guys um, again thank you thank you thank you for coming for your patience and love and honor for uh, your attendance period um, you can donate for the class at um, menphoenix.org slash reiki101. Um, uh, we can do PayPal. We have a PayPal link. It's uh, paypal.me slash menphoenix. Um, just ask $8 donation or whatever you're able to. Um, so again, I'm putting it out free, obviously, here. So anyone can receive that is, you know, no matter what your ability to contribute is. Um, just want to be giving the gift. Thank you so much to um, to Crystal Griffin, Tina Burt, and Shell Varner um, for being the first to inspire this class and to start the energy um, flowing for it um, before and during the the DC trip for Justice for Prince. Really love and honor to you, sisters. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and um, <laughs> love you. I'll see you all very soon. See you next week. And I'll post this manual um, in the comments of this video and on the Mim Phoenix page for uh, Reiki 101. I hope you guys have a great week. Peace.